Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today we have a special show from the ABV Barrel Shop Tasting Bar, where I'm joined by Josh Dale. Uh, on the first time he's actually ever even listened to a, an episode of the, the Bourbon Daily. Uh, and uh, he's here with me at the ABV Barrel Shop Tasting Bar. Hey, Josh, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. So... You come in here, I asked you to be on the podcast today, because you're regular in, in the shop, yeah. and you came in today to be on the podcast, and then you said, like, I, uh, confession time, I don't listen to the podcast. Yes. So so you hear, like, me talking is you the first time hearing the, the podcast right now. Yes. I yeah. Think, I think I've tried to start listening to it a couple times, but uh, something distracted me, and, you know, being ADD, so right. you know, I just, something distracted me, I squirrel, hey. Yeah. Up? But, um. Uh, but no, I, I uh, it's definitely been on my to do list. Okay, okay. So, so we're going to be trying Ironfish Distillery. This is a, uh, a bottle that was actually given to me by a customer that was in here. He's like, "Hey, I, I think he was from Michigan. I, I, hopefully, he's a listener and he's, he he can correct me on all this stuff." But he was stopping in. He said, "Hey." This is like from a local distillery. I'd like you to try this, so uh, we've got it. We're, we'll be tasting. It's eighty six proof. That's a little bit lower proof than we normally do, as you know. Kind of a so that'll be interesting. I I just I just opened it. We haven't even uh, popped the cork yet. I took the plastic off. We'll do that right before we go to break today. But before we get to all that, before we start talking about Iron Fish, Josh, let's hear a little bit about you, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, I live here in Arnold. Um, so whenever I found you guys, and whenever you guys first opened, I was here. That opening weekend, yeah, I saw um, some of the day one pictures. You're yeah, in them. You're yeah, in, you're I, in the day was, one pictures. So you've here been here from the one, beginning. Um, and uh, it was it was exactly what I've always been looking for, and and somewhere to go to get to learn about good whiskey. Uh-huh. Cause, uh huh. Because you know, job and life life happens, and you can't always get on the bourbon trail, and you'll go go to the distilleries all the time. Right. And so this is a great place to come. Great place to. Uh, Learn a lot, and I have in the past year, year and a half since you guys been open, I've learned a lot about whiskey, mm -hmm. and it's open. It's opened the doors up to all kinds of new things, new experiences. Uh, I've been syndicated since you guys opened the syndicate. Well, the second round of the syndicate. Okay, was 80, so pretty early on, eighty-seven. Yeah. yeah, number eighty-seven to be in with, but uh, but so been on a few barrel picks now, and it's. It's been a great experience. It's not too bad, right? Barrel picks are all right, aren't they? They are awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun to do, and uh, yeah, you get to see you know the world of distilling from a little bit different set of eyes when you when you're hanging out with us because you get to meet the people that are in the business. We do a lot of events and stuff like that, and you attend a lot of those, and it's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're pretty proud of this place and what it means to to people, and we 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 love it being here. So you know, Jim and I have we've created something that uh, is a hangout for us too. So you like coming in talking whiskey? That's what we like to do. So. Yeah. yeah, we've created this place to do exactly that. Uh, in terms of personal background, you're a, a you know military veteran. You're active military right now. You, yes. the, if, as if the Marines wasn't enough, you, <laughs> you do your time with the Marines, and then you uh, now you're in the uh, Army Reserves, right? So. Yes, I am. Uh, got out of the Marines, said I'm never going back and doing that. <laughs> and then 
life happens, and then you say, well, I got this skill set, so right. let me see what I can use this skill set for, and see if anybody will pay me for that. And Army Reserve said, we'll pay you for it. So, okay. So now I've been doing that here and there for the reserves for the last 15 years. and Okay. I actually get to retire now, finally. Well, soon. Retirement's around the corner, huh? Right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. So, so. that'll be good. Uh, you're tired, right? At some point, you know, you've been doing this a long time. You're in the Marines, you know, obviously you, you served your, your country well there. And then, uh, you know, you 15 years now, you got going army and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's, it's probably time to, to, to rest a little bit, right? Yes. It's definitely time to rest. The body say the body saying it's time <laughs> yeah. to, it's time to tap out and, you know, throw in the towel. Right. So. Cause uh, you know, being <laughs> army reserve is no joke. You recently had to go through this whole thing because you have fitness tests and all that. You got to make oh, sure yeah. that you are physically fit and, and ready to go. So Absolutely. you were working on that pretty hard for a while. And I wouldn't uh, say I was working on it hard. No, I'm, still, well, I'm still relying on hey, us, but I did my youth. But well, <laughs> anybody, once you cross, I, and I don't know exactly how old you are, but once you cross cross forty, I mean, you know, doing those sort of things, and I don't even know where you're at. I don't even know oh. if you're past forty, but uh, yeah, you're. I'm, yes. I'm forty two and forty two. Okay, it's definitely not easy. Yeah, it's, it's not easy, not man. Easy. So yeah, so if you asked me to run two miles. It's like, oh, this is going to hurt. Right, this right. is going to hurt. And uh, I know one of the things you're uh, looking forward to is being able to grow your beard out. You have to, yes. uh, yeah, because you are in the reserves, so it means you're not in there at all all the time. You're, you're allowed to when you're not, you know, actively on the reserves. You can grow your beard out, but then you gotta when you're got to report, you gotta cut that thing off, right? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. a that's a point of contention with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is very very much a sore spot. Right, um, right. I I actually have to shave my face tomorrow, so everybody that'll see me this week and for yeah. the tasting will see me baby faced, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to go through, uh, yeah, obviously basic training when you when you join the Marines. What happens when you join the reserves after that? Do, do you get to waive that because you've kind of already been through all that stuff, or, or do you do uh, the shortened program? How does that work? It depends on which branch you've served in before. Okay. Uh, since I served in the Marine Corps, I can go to any other branch without going through boot camp again. <laughs> uh-huh. So yeah. I can just, I basically signed up for the Army. I went through MEPS, the medical, you know, medical examinations. They said, you're fit to serve. Um, go see, you know, your the uh, Army liaison. When it's in the army liaison, he said, "Here's your unit. Go report in." Uh huh. And that was it. I reported into my unit, and I actually drilled for the first six months before they even got me uniforms. Yeah. Because the, basically, they just gave me uniforms, and I just put on the uniform and start getting paid and start serving again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I can go into any other branch uh, now. If you were in the army, decided to go into the Marines or anywhere else, you'd have to go through, back through boot camp. Right. Uh, if you're in the Air Force, decide to go to either branch, you probably have to go through boot camp. Right. Now, I know certainly there's a level of respect uh, across military lines, but there's also a, a pride that goes with, you know, I'm a Marine or I'm in the Navy or I'm in the Army. What happens when you serve in more than one branch? Do you do, uh, Are you just ostracized from everybody or, or, no, or do you like both or do you like one more than the other? How does that work? You catch a lot of shit. <laughs> you catch a lot right. of scuff about it because... Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, I get a lot of stuff, but you'd be surprised about how, how many people do it. Uh-huh. Um, I think in my unit right now, there's about four of us that are prior Marine Corps. Okay. Uh, when I deployed last, I was deployed with four or five of us that were prior Marines as well. So uh-huh. it happens a lot more than you would think. Um, I actually called up my brother cause my brother is 22 years active duty Marine Corps before he retired. Right. And whenever he retired, whenever he was still serving, is when I joined the Army Reserves, and I actually called him up before I made that decision, and I asked him, I was like, what do you think of this, and what are you going to think of me? Are you going to disown me? Or, right. You know? And uh, we had that conversation. He's like, he, 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 he still gives me crap, too. He gives me a lot of crap about being <laughs> Army, but he also said that, you know, it's, yeah. it's my life, it's my uh-huh. family, i got to make my decisions, and that's okay. what I did. So. Okay. So is the Army unique, or, or do all branches of the service have, like, a reserve – you know, like like the army does, or um, so they do. Could, could you be, you know, in the Marines as a Marine reservist? Yes. Like you're okay. I didn't yes. know that. Yeah. Um, and I'd looked into it, and honestly, around here, um, the only reason I didn't is because the job selections. Right. Uh, you're right. very limited on job selections in the reserves, depending on your location. Yeah. And since we're not on the coast anywhere, right, um, makes sense. And that's where most of your Marine bases are. They're on the coast, you know, they're amphibious and and everything else. So. Um, around here, I'd be doing a lot of uh, probably funerals at JB 
Yeah, you know? yeah. and I, was, I just didn't want to do that. So. Right, right. And so the 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 career choices is the main thing that made me go to the army. Yeah, and then I, it's honestly opened up a lot of avenues for me, and that's actually how I've gotten the jobs I have today is because of I chose a uh, transportation management. Uh-huh. And transportation management has opened up a lot of avenues for me. That's how I became a railroader. That's how I worked for MoDOT. And, I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's definitely opened up a lot of opportunities. All right. Well, uh, we're going to take it out to break with a, uh, with a cork pop. We like to do these on the, on the Bourbon Daily. Normally, it's like a competition. Uh, but in this example, we're only popping one bottle. So uh, we just do, do this one. So let's hear what this Iron Fish sounds like on the pop. Solid. Solid. So it feels like uh, if uh, somebody like Von Dieters who likes to win the cork pops maybe wants to pick up a bottle of this, it would uh, certainly get him in the mix. So so there you go. So what we'll do next, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be tasting this offering from Ironfish. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. I'm Ryan Thompson, and I am a billionaire. And KK will get none of my whiskey, and I enjoy my single malt scotch. You're listening to the Bourbon Daily. Pendleton, where's my caviar? All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Steve Akeley and Josh Dale here at the ABV Barrel Shop Tasting Bar. We're getting ready to try some Iron Fish. So just a little bit about this product. This is a bourbon whiskey finished in maple syrup barrels. Comes in at 86 proof, as I mentioned before the break. Iron Fish is out of Thompsonville, Michigan. Not familiar with exactly where that is. But uh, we certainly have uh, plenty of Michigan fans in our audience, and uh, they probably know exactly where that is. It uh, this is a source product. Uh, it does say that, and they're very upfront about it. So there's nothing you know hidden there or anything like that. On the back of the bottle, they talk about while their whiskey is aging. So it makes it sound like they are laying uh, down barrels actively. While it's aging, they are sourcing product, and uh, this falls under that. So we'll give this thing a taste. Cheers, Josh. Cheers. I mean, it's 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 nice. It's super easy drinker. Um, oh yeah. Uh, I mean, 
I, I definitely like, I'd love to see this at like 115 proof. Uh, that's the only, that, the only criticism is the proof. Uh, yeah. And again, there may be plenty in the audience that are listening to me like, I don't like the high proof. This would be a good offering. That no, was a very good offering for, yeah. for a low proof. S- subtle on the maple syrup, which is good. I, I don't like when things taste like they're a, you know, a flavored whiskey or something like that. I, I like a subtle note. It's definitely got, it's subtle on the, on the maple syrup. So. Yeah, I was a little worried about that with the low proof and being mm-hmm. maple. I was, I was afraid it was going to taste like a, a flapjack. But <laughs> right, It exactly. definitely does not taste like a flapjack. It doesn't taste it. like that. It tastes like whiskey with uh, with some notes of maple in it, which is it was pretty good. And that's a pretty uh, a good uh, testament to what they've got going on. So I'm, I'm interested in Iron Fish now. I want to see what they've got doing. I can't wait till they come out with some stuff. That'll be worth seeing. I like the branding. It's got kind of a cool look. What I like about it is the label. It's It's, you know, die cut label. And uh, there's a fish on the label, uh, the iron fish, and he's floating there by himself. It's a separate sticker altogether, which is kind of cool. So that's a little bit different. I haven't uh, seen anybody do something like that. So that's kind of a cool little component to what they've got going on there. So there you go. That's uh, a, a gift, a gifted bottle of iron fish. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if uh, this ends up being something that uh, that we like as they continue to grow and expand their distribution and hopefully make it at some point down here to Missouri and Maybe we'll look at uh, barrel picks down the road with them. So, very cool. On that note, we're going to wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find us. Josh, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? Social media, anything like that? Do you do any of that kind of stuff? Uh, not a whole lot. Okay. Uh, I, I, that's kind of why, kind of behind you the live name. Live anonymously, yeah. Yeah, kind yeah. of behind the name, I, you know, with, my, with my background in the military. You have a pseudo name, yeah. Yeah, yeah. with my secret clearances and stuff like right. that through the military. I try to, try to keep my footprint on the internet off okay but okay. um but i am i do i do follow i am on facebook but um that's why they got the name josh dale because josh dale's your name on there my yeah. last name's done on there <laughs> right right so and that's just what we call you because uh it's yeah. just easier so oh, yeah. yeah that's what we were used to seeing on social easier. media <laughs> and i know your last name and uh that one uh, would be hard to spell and uh, even to pronounce so yeah oh yeah that's one of Imagine those being a kid in second grade <laughs> Learn how to write that cursive. <laughs> right, right. So. Yeah, yeah, so... Yes, it's a challenge, and I, I understand. So there you go. But uh, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, that thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Josh, you know we've got over 4,000 podcasts for you to listen to. So, you know, for a guy like you in the car, things like that, uh, yep. you know, transportation, man, you probably want to listen to some podcasts. We can help you out with that. The Bourbon Show and the Bourbon Daily are two great shows to listen to. And, uh, and of course, Josh does this all the time. The ABV Barrel Shop. Come by and see us. You never know who's going to be here, what we're doing. Sometimes we're recording podcasts. Sometimes we're just here sampling whiskey and uh, having lots of fun. So check us out online, abvbarrelshop.com. Well, that's it for today. We'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. See ya. Peace. Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing, the ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.